installment of Math Basics, Mr. Besh. Today we talk flashcards and particularly flashcards for our times tables. This was due to a parent request. Uh, they basically just wanted to know if there was any study strategies uh, to make their elementary to middle school student stronger in math. And without hitting on the obvious, uh, the first resource that came to my mind was flashcards. Some simple facts. Elementary to middle school students that excel in math tend to have strong math fundamentals. Yet elementary to middle school students that struggle in math tend to have weak fundamentals, or as we say, gaps. The result of this is a student becomes frustrated, um, they tend to get behind in their classes, and, and worse of all, a um, student starts developing low self-esteem. From a teacher's perspective, this can be really bad because now the student can understand a lesson but still miss questions on a quiz or a test because they missed a basic finishing technique. However, this is fixable. No need to panic, but there is no magic potion. You see, work and practice above and beyond the class is required and, 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 and also above the student's current curriculum that they're working on. Um, a lot of free time needs to be devoted to this to get them up to speed, as we say. To make our flashcards, we just need a stack of note cards and, and, and some colorful markers. They always tend to make things a little bit better here. And what we do first um, is we take our note card and we go long ways. And this is where we start with our, our, our uh, um, multiplication problems. Now, everybody's different. Uh, sometimes they want you to go up to the times tables of 12, 12 times 12 being the highest. Sometimes they do 13. Sometimes I've even seen 15, all right? Uh, that's going to determine. And once you do this, you take your times tables and you put them into piles and, and rubber band them based on the times tables itself. So like the ones tables would be by themselves, the twos tables, the threes table, and so on and so on. The example that we're using here is my threes tables. Also notice that, you know, I'll always put on the top red um, what tables we're using, okay, so they're not confused. So on one side, we'll do three times four. Notice there's no answer. And on the other side, I'll put the answer, but look how I write it. I write it long ways. At the top, I write three times four again, just like the front, but down, down at the bottom, I have my answer. I do this twofold. The first reason I do this is now the student can see the answer when they flip it over. But more importantly, once they develop and master the skills for the multiplication tables, now they can use these same cards for division. They would only be looking at this side. You see, once I go from the answer, I can travel in a circular motion going to the right. And now from, from, from this, I get 12 divided by 4 is going to make the next value in my sequence, which is 3. And then if I travel backwards to the left, 12 divided by 3 is going to make 4. So this is a nice addition to our multiplication times table where we we'll also we'll have the ability to do our division table as well. So, so that's it. Nothing real complicated. Um, there is going to be two more videos that I'm going to make with flashcards. I'm going to be dealing one with uh, percents, decimals, and fractions, and the other is going to be integers. Um, and that's basically it. So I hope you find this both uh, helpful and informative.